When I first started to do a lot of software interviews and I was asked to do system design interviews, I looked online for all kinds of different ways to find a systematic way to study. You know, for lead code, it was like, go through this list, go through that list, learn this data structure and algorithm. But for system design, there didn't seem to be a specific way that people studied. I took that advice to heart. And a lot of the times in my past interview experiences, I would leave system design as something that I would just wing on the interview. You know, the interview would come and I would just start to like make shit up and then hope that it would work out. But based on my experience, system design is one of those things that you really either know it or you don't. An interviewer is kind of gonna know if you know what you're talking about or if you're just making things up because you don't know what you're doing. So today, I wanted to take what I learned over the past couple months and the past years of me interviewing myself and try to explain my own process for studying system design now. So let's start with active learning. Okay, to start with what I've done in the past. The way I studied system design in the past was I used this system design primer GitHub repo. This is posted all over Reddit and I'll post it in the comments down below or in the comment section, the description, sorry. But basically this is a gigantic readme doc that is pushed to GitHub that explains every little system design nuance you could possibly think of. And this worked very well. It has a whole bunch of different papers that it links to and a whole bunch of different links and blogs and everything like that. This is a, an excellent tool for you to use to study system design. But the thing about it is that um, people learn slightly differently based on who they are. And for me, reading things, I just learn very, very slowly and it's difficult for me to grasp a lot of information. So I use this more as just one of my sources. The source I've been using most commonly in the past couple of months is a YouTube channel called Jordan Has No Life. This guy basically has made a whole bunch of videos about the system design basics like described in the earlier GitHub repository that I was talking about. But he's also made a ton of videos about designing all kinds of different systems. And the thing about his videos is that he is super in depth more in depth than I've seen pretty much any YouTuber out there go, where he'll take a problem and he'll really, really drill down into what happens and why it happens that way. The most obvious example probably is when he talks about database indexes. Hey everyone. I don't want to play too much of it, but basically he goes very deep into how the database actually stores the data, how it actually does everything behind the scenes, like what types of data structures are using. It basically shows you that a lot of system design and how technology is built out there isn't magic. Like things behind the scenes don't just run because, you know, there's some sort of crazy algorithm behind there. They're all just data structures and algorithms, just like we've learned in all our computer science classes. So if you're a person who really likes to watch videos to learn your information and to learn how to study, I would recommend you check out this YouTube channel, which basically he has a whole set of videos for every single small piece of um, the system design puzzle that you need for interviews. He's about like 60 or so videos. I watched all of them, they're great. And then he has about like 30 or so videos just designing very common systems that we use on a daily basis, you know, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, stuff like that, Discord. And when you're watching the videos, it can be really easy to feel like you're being very productive, you know, like you sat here for an hour watching the video and you feel really good about yourself. But the thing about it is if you don't take notes and review them in a careful way, you can be very easily kind of wasting your time a little bit. A lot of the times when I study systems in the past, I never really took a lot of effort to take notes. I would just look at things and then be like, okay, I got it and move on. So I designed myself a pretty systematic way of taking notes, which I will talk about later. And the last system design interview tool that I use is called grokking the system design interview, which is, you know, also kind of a meme on Reddit and other sources and everything like that. But objectively, it's a very good resource. It does one thing that the videos and the other GitHub repo that I showed does not do, which is it gives you a systematic way on how to actually interview in system design, how to break down your questions in a way where your interviewer won't be confused, which is where I move into the next section for practicing. So in real life, when you're doing a system design interview, 
you're working with a real person who's asking questions back and forth. He's trying to pick apart your design. He's trying to see how you would optimize certain things. So it's more of a conversation with someone. And this is where this grokking, the system design interview comes into play for me. Basically, what it does really well is give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to talk to interviewers, right? Like step one, you clarify requirements with your interviewer just to make sure you're understanding like the scale and scope and what kinds of things you're gonna be designing for your project. You know, step two is back of the envelope estimation where you try to estimate like network bandwidth, you're trying to estimate like how much you need for caching, how much storage you need for disk memory, how many machines you might need to determine the true scale of your system and everything. The th third step was always like API design, basic stuff just to show what are the inputs and outputs of your system. The fourth step is defining a data model, which is basically like how the data in your database is gonna work and how it's gonna be laid out. And the fifth step is like a high level design where you just draw your whole application and the general places where all the little components of your system will be, which will show your interviewer from all these steps that you generally know what you're talking about. And then it has a sixth and a seventh step, which is, it's hard to really quantify in like a, online tutorial courses, something like that. But this is basically where in a real interview, an interviewer will ask you questions about, you know, how do you optimize this? Or like, how would you do this in a different way? Or like, why did you choose this for your solution instead of this other thing? So given that whole template, I mentioned earlier that I'm using different sources to actively learn, but then applying those concepts and practice, practicing them are just as important, if not more important. What I do with this is I use that format that I just talked about, and then I essentially quiz myself, right? Like I go through these things, I look what the requirements are, and then I try to draw it out myself as if I'm testing myself. Like I'm doing the back of the napkin math in order to estimate capacity, which side note, if you're like me and you're really bad at mental math, this shit was actually, it's way harder than you expect. Uh, it took me a while to completely understand that. But anyways, I calculate the back of the napkin math. I quiz myself to see if it's right or if my scale is right. I'll design the APIs myself and then quiz myself by checking, okay, are they right? Like, did I have the right idea here? I'll design my own database model and then kind of look at the database model here and see, okay, like, does this kind of match up? Like, what was I missing and why did I miss it? And then from there, I try to draw out my own system architecture, the whole, you know, drawing with all the components linked together and try to figure out places that are bottlenecked, like things that can be improved. And then I come to this final section right here, which is where they have all kinds of different questions and answers. I generally just try to look at the bold ones and see like, okay, so what are the different issues with our solution? Or like, can concurrency call, cause problems? Like what would the DB key size be? Basically, I'm just pretending that an interviewer is asking me these questions and I try to fix, optimize, or at least understand what I did wrong with my own solution. Okay. so. The final step of what I've been doing to study system design is reviewing very, very consistently. I mentioned earlier that when you're learning, especially if you're watching videos or reading a lot of text, it's important to make sure that you're recording everything that you're doing. So for me, you know, I'm a Notion nerd, as you might know, and uh, I basically created this Notion database using the active recall format. If you've watched my elite code video, you probably know that I love the active recall format, which is basically, you know, as I'm watching these videos, as I'm like reading this stuff right here, I'm trying to constantly ask myself questions. Like I'm trying to ask myself, like, how does this little component work? Or like, what would I need for this other thing? Or why would I use this component over this component? Stuff like that. And I basically write all these questions down and I tag them by the topic specifically. So first I did it by topic. Like while I was learning these system design concepts, I went through all those videos from earlier that I showed you. And I would ask myself like, okay, what is it from this video that I could ask myself later to review something that I don't really know that well. So just pulling up a random example, if we're going to look at caching, I would write the question, explain write back cache. And while I'm reviewing, I would cover up the answer. And this is where I would try to explain it for myself. I would try to look, look at the question only and then try to put the answer in my own terms. And then if I really can't get it, then I just look over to the answer and read back to myself. Okay, so what did I write before and what did I get wrong? At which point, if I struggle with that concept, then I'll make sure to mark it down as a question that I need to review and something that I struggle with more. So I have this checkbox right here in this same database for me to do that. I know a lot of this stuff is a lot of work, but generally if we just learn actively 
we take notes with the active recall method and we practice system design over and over, I don't see how there's a way we can't like move forward. Lately, I found myself getting much better at understanding these concepts and really just understanding how the world of technology works around me. And it's really brought back a lot of my passion for software engineering in general. So anyways, that's it for me today. If you want to check out another video about my lead code study process, I'll put that on the screen somewhere over here. But yeah, as always, thanks for watching.